Every year, like clockwork, hikers go into the mountains in the winter and they lose their lives. This year, we've already lost two people up in the mountains. There's two people missing right now uh, as I'm making this video. It's incredibly sad and tragic. And I know a lot of you at home are sort of writing this off. You're saying, well, they didn't have the experience. They were making poor choices. You know, that's true to an extent, but I'd invite you to put yourself into their shoes. You know, they've probably done these hikes in the summertime. It's been fine. They've enjoyed it. Maybe they've even hiked in the winter. Maybe they've done some big summits like Whitney and whatever else it might be. I've, I've seen these people's social media. They have done these things. And why are people losing their lives? What I would say, and if there's one thing you should take away from this, is that a hike in the summer is not a hike in the winter. All of those hundreds of pounds, hundreds of thousands of pounds of snow and ice on your hike route make the risk level dramatically higher. It's dramatically higher in the winter, and those risks are things that are totally out of your control. Yes, you can prepare, and you know, hiking in the winter sometimes becomes more of a mountaineering exercise. A lot of the times it does in the, in the mountains up there, but you know, no matter how much you prepare, and you, you're mountaineering and you've got all the gear and you've practiced and you know the local terrain and avalanche areas and all of that, there's still an elevated risk for you to get hurt or die. It's why mountaineers who have tons of experience die, you know, up in, on K2 and Everest and all of those places. There are some things that are just out of your control. Now, there's some things that are, are in your control. There's things like exposure, right? Like getting too cold. Folks go out, they think they're gonna be done in the day and they have the layers for the day and then they don't realize that hiking in the snow takes much longer or maybe the trail looks different because it's covered in snow and now they're lost and now they're out there at night and you know it's dramatically colder than they expected or they're out there multiple days and it's colder and then they get into trouble. There's things like avalanches, right? Where we're gonna have tons of, of snow and ice coming down on top of you. That's something you can uh, learn about. You can look at slope shading. You can avoid areas that are prone to avalanches. Sometimes that's not a possibility depending on the hike route that you're doing. Um, you can take a course. There's a course called uh, Aries, Airy One, I think it's called, where you can learn about avalanche country and how to prevent it, how to rescue people. I'll put a link to that under the video if you're interested. But there's things you can do to sort of mitigate the risk in avalanche country. The thing that freaks me out the most and I see happens probably the most often when I read uh, reports of people having trouble in the mountains is slipping. Now, when I hike in the summer in good conditions, I slip on gravel, I fall sometimes, I roll an ankle. When you're hiking on those steep slopes, those switchbacks, those traverses, where there's like a very steep slope and you're on a slippery trail, Basically one misstep can mean you are going down that slope. That's all it takes. And all you have to do is make one mistake or maybe you get hit by a piece of debris when you hike in the winter, snow and ice falls off trees and stuff, like something knocks you off balance, whatever it might be, anything can happen and then you are going down that slope. Now there's ways you can uh, sort of mitigate that event or the dangers of that event. You can get an ice ax and learn how to self arrest which is basically plowing that ax into the slope, but that doesn't always work. Um, and what happens is when you're gonna go down the slope, maybe you'll come out unscathed. I've definitely seen that happen before. Maybe you're gonna get injured, or maybe like your head is gonna smash into a piece of granite or a tree or whatever it might be, and you're gonna lose your life. That possibility, it's not something that's like probable, I'd say, but it's definitely possible. I have hiked many times in the winter all over the world in Switzerland and the Sierras on the East Coast, and I have slipped, I have seen people slip. It definitely happens. So be super careful. No hike is worth risking your life for, right? And if you're saying, well, I'm okay with that risk level, I'm gonna take some mountaineering course, courses, I'm gonna learn how to use the crampons and step right and the ice axe and all of that, there's still a level of risk that's totally out of your control. So just know that, and also know that you're not just risking your life, you're risking the lives of anyone else who may come to uh, search for you if you get in trouble. Search and rescue teams, there was a guy who lives about 15 minutes from me down the road, or lived 15 minutes from me down the road. He went to do a hike on the old Mount Baldy Trail. He went missing. There was a massive search and rescue operation uh, to find him. One of the guys on the team, an experienced search and rescue guy, nine years experience, had a family. He lost his life searching for this other injured or missing hiker. So 
If you're going to go out and take these risks, know that you're not just risking your life, you're also risking the lives of the people who may have to search for you if anything happens. Things that are in your control or things that are out of control, anything that puts you in a situation where you may have to hit the SOS button on your inReach or whatever, you're putting other people's lives at risk. So. I don't recommend hiking in the winter in the mountains in the snow. I used to do it when I was younger and didn't really have this level of, of context to, to the whole idea of it. Uh, I don't do it anymore. If you do want to get into winter hiking, what I'd recommend is finding a forest service road that's covered in, in snow here in Southern California. We have some good ones around Big Bear, but just taking your spikes or snowshoes and walking on a forest service road. That's a great way to dip your toe into winter hiking and even see if you if you like it. It's not for everyone, definitely not. Um, but see if you like it before you start risking your life and other people's lives. If you wanna get deeper, you can uh, basically join like a reputable hiking club. Like here we have the Sierra Club. I know they have different winter excursions or winter type uh, events for beginners, but learning how to hike in the winter, which again is getting into mountaineering is something that I don't recommend learning off of YouTube or reading a book. It's really something you should learn from another person, learn how to use the gear, learn how to read the land forms, learn the trouble spots in your area. And then even then, you know, go out knowing that there's some risk involved. You can also take uh, classes, I think up in Bishop, California, there is a, a guiding uh, service that offers winter hiking classes or seminars where you can learn the ropes too. So there's some options there. I'll put all those links under the video if you want to learn more about it or, you know, take the next step into winter hiking. But what I would say is do what I do, which is I avoid the mountains in the winter. I go and hike all of the places that I are too hot in the summer. So in Southern California here, we're a little bit spoiled, but I go into the desert and I hike in the desert, which is beautiful. I hike the lower peaks, which in the winter time are all green and lush when there's snow. Uh, and there's plenty of great hiking to be done without having to risk your life. So that's what I got for you. I didn't really want to make this video, but I, I just wanted to get the word out there just in case you're on the fence. If you're thinking, well, maybe I'll go up to Mount Baldy because I've done that hike before and, uh, you know, I'll get some micro spikes and give it a try. Please don't, please do something else. And my only ask here is that if this logic resonates with you, if, you, if you're if you picking up on what I'm laying down here, just spread the word and tell their people not to go up there. Uh, hopefully we can save some lives, save some people from getting into trouble and uh, you know make hiking a little safer for everyone.